this is week two of the third iteration of R795, coming to you on my weekly podcast show with SUNY Seoul, live from San Francisco, where everything happens. The rest of the world kind of starts happening on the East Coast. We have people on the East Coast here, too. So, you know, we're, we're, we've got the whole country covered, in effect, all the time zones or just about. So it's lovely to have you here again, my friends, in week two of ours, 795. And this is where we start the good stuff. No longer just getting you acclimated to the syllabus, although we'll start with questions about that. It's now time to get into thinking about at least your dissertation proposal, perspectives, and final dissertation. And actually, tonight or probably next week, I'll actually talk about revising the dissertation, which some of you don't even want to think about at the time you're doing a proposal. Oh, I'd have to actually revise it after I defend it? Yes, indeed. I have been on 120 dissertations, and I can count on two of my fingers how many had no revisions. <laughs> Okay, there was one recent one uh, in February. My student, uh, Rob Elliott, did a dissertation. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a Rob coming in one week. I think he is coming in to talk about his dissertation. So, um, and I had a student about uh, 15 years ago from Taiwan, originally from Taiwan. She was here in Bloomington. Her husband got his PhD in economics or something, and she got hers in language ed. And one person on the committee was kind of sick at the time of the defense. And another person was kind of traveling, although we don't, don't tell IU that. So there were two of us left in the room. All, all four of us read it, actually. Um, and the two of us were her co-advisors and chairs. And we had no changes. <laughs> and she just sailed on through. And she's doing great things as a professor in Taiwan. So um, I won't say her name so you can't look her up and create a lawsuit against IU because we're going to make you do more than what she does. She did a lot of work. <laughs> Her name's Maya Liang, and um, she's got a PhD. Her husband has a PhD. Her sister has a PhD. It's in the family. <laughs> it's in the family. And what she did, what she did, what is what Mon Wan's going to do, is she took me to, and her husband, all of us went out, family, to Malibu Grill in Bloomington, the best restaurant in Bloomington. It's a kind of a tradition for some doctoral students when they graduate, especially if they're here in Bloomington, we go to Malibu Grill to eat because it's on the square in downtown. It's best food, it's got uh, cross borders, many different types of dishes. So anyways, I'm sure Mang Wan's gonna love to come down here. Uh, yeah, she's shaking yeah, her and, yeah, and you give me idea. So <laughs> I don't need to look for a restaurant. <laughs> so, Mang Wan, when are you going to defend? Well, I will try sometime next year. <laughs> Early hopefully next the, year. Hopefully in the spring. <laughs> yeah. So Mang Wan was my TA a decade ago when she was here as a master's student starting in 2010 with Yua, who's here as well. The two of them were sitting two rows back, just off to my right-hand side with a third person, Shuya. Um, and Shuya, Mangwan, and Yua were, and a, a fourth person, a gentleman from Taiwan named Jason. There are three new Chinese students who started at the same time as master students, as I mentioned maybe last week. And Mangwan's decided to come back and work for her PhD or, doc, or EDD, yes. and same with Yua and Shuya did a PhD a year, a couple of years back, and is in, in San Francisco area as well. Um, so it's great to see them come back and um, extend beyond their master's degrees. So, because let, let me just say that in that first class, they're extremely talented. I knew they were talented. They're very creative. They're very energetic and very committed and dedicated to doing their work um, and really set a good example for the rest of the class. That doesn't, the rest of the class was really good too, if I remember right. Um, uh, I think we had Elliot Jordan in there, um, a former Broadway play actor, very interesting guy. He's here in Bloomington. Um, many other students were, it was a great class. So Mang Wan came back the following semester with my TA in R546. And when Mang Wan graduated, I got a phone call from a guy who's an entrepreneur in creating learning management systems. His name is Ali Jafari. Dr. Jafari got his PhD in Bloomington in telecom uh, and created the first 
learning management system, one of the first in the world, but the first in Bloomington. And we used it. Uh, you used it. It was called On Course. Don't tell them I called it No Course or On Curse at first, the first iteration. Then he developed a, a better version. He called it Angel. And Angel got bought out by Blackboard for, for $100 million. And IU owned 30% of that. And IU really didn't know what Ali was doing or really interested in what he was doing the whole time. But when IU made $30 million, they got really happy. You know, um, it's all about the money, you know. And so they got really happy with that, what Ali was doing. And he now sits, and Mangwan sits in a very nice building. Uh, it almost should be called the Ali Jafari building. Um, but <laughs> you, we went up, um, Kim, where's Kim? Kim and I uh, went up there and uh, took a look at the facility up there with Mangwan in, was it late in May as a final class or, or, or end of April? Was it April or early May, Kim? Do you remember? It was early May. Yeah. Okay. And then we went out to the garage and had we're an old bus depot and Coca-Cola bottling factory, which is now a restaurant, um, I guess, cluster of restaurants in a building that you can pick and choose what kind of food and drink you want. It's really cool. We could do that this semester if anyone's living near Indianapolis. I love going up to Indianapolis and going to uh, the garage or the amp or other places. Um, my old hangout was Champions or Champs downtown, as well as a couple other places um, that I like to go in Indianapolis. So Indianapolis, they don't say Indianapolis, just like, uh, yeah, Indianapolis, because it's nap town. You see, they sleep there, <laughs> except for once a year when India 500 comes. But uh, Mung Wan is sitting in north part of Indianapolis in Carmel, probably, with two young kids somewhere around her. So she wants to start because she has to go at seven. And so we'll have her go first and then uh, soon may. Uh, Mang Wan helped me with uh, instructional strategies class as a master's student and did a stellar job in that class. As I said, maybe it's, not, it's 2011 when you were in that, 2010 when you first started in, as a student, uh, as a master's student. Um, and so uh, Ali Jafari called me on the phone. He says, do you have anybody who's graduating who could get a you know, work for me? I said, I got just the person. Let me tell you about her. And Mang Wan was the one I told him about. And he's the, she's the one he hired um, not quite 10 years ago. Maybe it was nine years ago. What year did you start? 2013 or 2012? The end of 2012. Okay, so, so almost was, 10 years. Yeah, yeah. So it has almost been 10 years, a decade. And she's the right hand person, I should say a white hand man, she's the, she's the right hand person. And this kind of really keeps the keeps the, the functioning of the operations in, in course networking. So Ali sold um, to, to Blackboard, his company Angel, and he also had ePortfolio tools that he sold to the New York Times, and some other systems he's built in the past that have, one could tell us about that. But um, he built course networking, which is more like a, a, a Facebook posting combined with learning management, combined with social media, it's kind of all in one. And um, we're now, I'm helping, I guess I'm on a board for creating a free version or an open source version for people in third world countries of course networking. Course networking is linked in with Canvas, so you'll see it there and instructors can decide to use it and I've used it once. Uh, maybe I should use it this semester, my one's probably twisting my arm. Um, so. Uh, so it's always a delight to go up because I get to see Mang Wan and Ali Jafari and all my friends in, in Indianapolis, um, which is now the University, Indiana University at Indianapolis. Um, I, you're not part of the Purdue side, are you, Mang Wan? Are you part we, of the... We are actually the Purdue side. Oh, no, no. <laughs> because several that belongs to the <laughs> School of Engineering and Technology, right. which will be part of the Purdue Oh, God. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't know. You know, our nice facility, the lab, now sitting in the building, we don't know that building would later will belong to Purdue or somehow the engineering side of the IEPI wow. will move out. Um, and we will move. We don't know. Just um, so oh. many things will need to be figured out. <laughs> when do you think you'll know? They say the transition will finish in two years or at least in two years, they will have a clear picture. So okay. we'll see. <laughs> so you may become a Purdue employee. Likely. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> no, we'll you know. see. Um, yeah. And Dr. Ali Jafari actually um, required us to go into the lab more often. And he said, who knows, maybe Purdue will send people to look at this building and then say, oh, cyber lab, there's no people working here. We will take this, this, this suite. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, I see. You know, down in Bloomington, we call it Perdon't. Um, but uh, not Purdue. Uh, and so <laughs> I hope it stays in Indiana hands, but okay, we can we can still talk to you if you work for Purdue. Um, <laughs> so Mang Wan, would you like to start with some advice for everybody? They're waiting with bated breath. They've heard the introduction. They know you're a wonderful person and presenter. Well, and she thank you is for the introduction. The best. So yeah. And thank you for inviting me to um, give everyone some tips. Um, so let me share my screen. I prepared a very simple, of like an infographic. Um, it's also like a PowerPoint. So, so go through some key points and I will also show you some additional resources. Um, so you will understand my points better. So I will be providing some tips for, uh, for you to take the qualifying exam and also provide some tips on writing dissertation proposal. Um, um, but Meng Wan, can I just interrupt one second? Sure. Both Meng Wan and Sun Mei recently passed the proposals. I mean, okay. recently it was this summer. So you're getting fresh, fresh thoughts and ideas. It's not recycled. We're not bringing someone back from a couple of years ago or five. Or, no, this is just two months ago. So yeah. they, they, what they tell you is current news. Uh, anything they have to say, any issues or problems they had run into or tips about how to overcome them. That's all really, really, really um, recent. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that they both could pop in here. I had seven students to defend their proposals this summer. Uh, my last one was yesterday, mm -hmm. so of seven. Um, so I've had a lot, I've seen a lot of proposals and these were two of the best ones. Soon they started collecting data today, it's just official. Um, the last person consented uh, this afternoon, maybe an hour ago, and and Meng Wan has been collecting her data since about two weeks ago when her final uh, what final proposal went through. So yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for the additional information. Um, so let's begin with some tips for the qualifying exam. The exam, as you know, there are three questions, right? Um, I will be talking more about question one and question two. Um, these are the two questions you will be um, answering during the first day. I feel these two questions are more stressful to me. Um, so provide some suggestions. Later, if you have questions about question number three, which is the um, the we call it a committee question. Um, you can ask me. I believe Sumi will will, will talk about that. Um, I will touch on it a little bit later. Uh, question one and question two. So in the morning, you will receive a application question in the morning of day one. Um, hard to say what that question will be, um, but I really think you should prepare a template for evaluation uh, to prepare how to answer a real world application plan, that kind of a question. Um, so they will give you a topic. And then um, like the, uh, the question we received, um, it's about micro learning. Um, they say, assume your organization will adopt micro learning, you will go to your supervisor and make a proposal. Uh, how are you going to evaluate? the micro learning um, plan you propose to your organization. So you are going to come up with a evaluation plan um, for adopting micro learning as a learning approach at your organization. But as for what kind of organization, um, that context, you will define the context of learning, the background of learning. Um, so when I say prepare a template, this is like, um, if you reveal the evaluation course you, you took, um, when you come up with the evaluation project, right, the project um, you wrote, there are some parts, right? Um, so you want to go back and review what you did in the evaluation course and um, come up with the sections that 
that is in your evaluation report. Um, here, I'm going to quickly show you what I did. I think I'm okay to show, but I'm, you won't be able to see all of the details. Um, just let you see the gist, so you know what I'm talking about, having a template. Okay, so um, I prepared a Google Doc like this. I already have the first page, you know, like my name, um, the school, and then uh, following the APA style, I have the header, all of these fill out. So I will not deal with the details, you know, using the very limited time while I answer the question, right, to deal with all of these. Um, and then, you know, you want to have, I, I revealed micro learning, but in your case, you need to see what the question will be, right? I, I don't think they will repeat the same topic. Um, so you may have a prepare a section, you're going to talk about your learning background and context. Um, and then I have a section that's for the evaluation questions, and then it will be the evaluation plan. So this is the core part. Um, what will be the evaluation methods, procedure, what will be the data collection and analysis method? Um, and then based on the question you receive, there will be some details, you know, like they will also ask you, they may uh, ask you to analyze strength and limitations of your plan um, and then references. So at least you have a Google Doc and then you already have these section titles. I would say at least for the evaluation question, right? You want to have the evaluation method part, that part, Think about what evaluation method or methods you are going to adopt. Um, that's Kirkpatrick or the 360 evaluation for corporations. Um, so have the, have, you know, to maybe go back and read a little more of these, um, about these evaluation methods. And then you can even draft like a, a couple of paragraphs about these evaluation methods or a evaluation method you are most comfortable you always adopt. Um, so I think this will really reduce the, the stress and then give you some time, extra time that you could put into other parts. Um, I feel I didn't do really well actually <laughs> after um, answering um, the question, because I feel I spent too much time uh, in the, um, you know, just reviewing the, the topic, the specific topic, in my case is micro learning. Um, in my, in your case, maybe that's virtual reality, or that may be, um, let's say, digital badges, the department will give you a specific topic. Um, I felt I spent too much time on that. I'd also spend a lot of time um, try to um, scope the, the, the learning context, you know, to come up with a specific learning context because I feel it will be difficult if I don't have a specific context to talk about the evaluation plan. Um, so this is what I have here. You know, you have a template document um, to begin with, and then you may also want to set up some timelines for each part. You know, how much time you are going to give to do a little bit literature reveal of the specific topic you received, right? How much time you will give it to describing the learning context in the background or the learners? Um, how much time you will spend on uh, the evaluation procedure, the methods, the data collection and analysis, um, you know, all of those. So, and then, you have a timer during the, the, the day um, while you answer each questions. And then really, you know, once you, you feel, oh, you know, it's already nine o'clock, I should have finished, uh, you know, the, um, the, the, the topic literature reveal and context, then move on to the next part, right? Or if you go a little bit over, try to catch up in the following sections. I spent too much time on the the beginning part. Um, so I feel I should have spent more time into um, analysis, the data analysis, right? Data collection analysis procedure, these core parts of the evaluation plan. Uh, but luckily, I passed uh, both questions <laughs> um, the first time. So I was um, very happy. Um, I was a little surprised. I thought at least the one question will ask me to make some revisions. Um, so the next question, the, 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 in the afternoon of the first day, uh, you will receive this article critique question. There is no doubt that there will be this, this will be another question. So um, the afternoon of day one 
it's definitely a article critique question. Yeah, it's just what kind of article? What is that article? Hard to, this is hard to predict. Um, but I also prepared a, um, a Google Doc for this. And um, I also have some sections that I know I will fill an app um, in ahead of uh, time. Um, very quickly give you a quick glance of this, okay? So Mangwan, um, before okay? we go further, Mangwan, <laughs> we have <laughs> questions for you. So, okay. so hang on, there's a couple of questions. Uh, Aisha has a question and she right. wants to know, right? You want to know about, the, do the questions relate to your dissertation area of interest or any area did the literature review search? Did you do a literature reverse? So separate questions, that's the first one. Did the question relate to your yeah. dissertation? Okay, so the two questions that I'm talking about right now, question one and question two, they are not. They are the questions the department will give to you. So you don't really know um, what that topic will be. Like ours, Sumi and I, we received, and that's about micro learning. That's a topic um, the department give to us to come up with a evaluation plan about. Right. In your case, that could be, uh, as I mentioned earlier, virtual reality or digital badges. Um, you just don't know. You know, if you are super, super lucky, it may be your research topic. <laughs> um, so. so that's a plug for my R678 class where we cover all those topics and mm. much, much more. Um, I hadn't thought about that before that, but the day one calls really does fall in line with that class sometimes not always and mm -hmm. she did say micro learning it sounded like you said macro learning oh sorry like, micro learning micro learning, micro -learning. Which I'm is a big topic and we just had a dissertation a student a phd student finishes dissertation on that topic um his name is raj and so we could have him come in and talk about that if you're interested in doing so i'm sure he'd love to he just just passed it this summer um, so the second question is, uh, Ishat asks us, did you do the literature? You, um, can you explain the second question, Ishat? Well, what I meant was, if you have three and a half hours, and this is, God forbid, a strange question, you know, a strange area you're not really familiar with, that means mm. you have to search for the literature to use for the context, you know, the literature overview. Mm. Mm. So are you supposed to build that within, let's say I decide to use 45 minutes for that section? So you're also doing Google search to look for yeah. articles that corresponded. Wow, I just went so to the I did it. it, I did it. I don't know whether it's required. And you know, really that's a very quick and superficial <laughs> literature reveal. Um, I will talk about uh, some possible data sites you should be very familiar with. And then during the day, let's say you are going to pop in a few references about that topic, right? Micro learning, um, you know which data site you can directly go into and then do some quick search. You don't need to, I, so to be honest, I didn't read those whole articles. I quickly glanced at the um, the, the about, just the, uh, the, the summary. And then, yeah, and then put in some um, references. And I think it's also fine to not have it, but I, I had it because I feel, um, you know, a doctoral, <laughs> a doctoral level before you talk about any, um, you know, just coming up, let's say coming up with evaluation plan for organization, you probably do a little bit um, literature reveal um, to have your argument based off of that. Yeah, oh, but I, I, think, I think I saw examples uh, from previous students, they don't have a literature review section. You don't have to, and then limit it to just like maybe half a page or a, you know maximum a page. Yeah, I just want the guidelines so that, of course, I would want to put something like that, right? To give the evidence to your basis or your claims. But at least since I don't have to go through a whole Google thing for like five or 10 references, Thank you. My heart is not even close. even just three, maybe like you know, um, three to five. I would say definitely. I don't want to uh, mislead everyone. Definitely don't spend the majority of your time on this. <laughs> I think it's something making your response better. Um, but you know, I feel I didn't do it very well. I, I feel I spend more time on to the literature reveal and uh, you know scope the context. I would say these two parts. Um, you may just spend about say have an hour to 40 minutes, then jump into the core part of, let's say that's an evaluation plan question, jump into your evaluation plan. And then if you have time, extra time later on, right? You can circle back and then um, insert in a few more references. 
How much time do you have total? Three hours or four hours? Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. So three or four. So let's have Sunni answer the same question since she's here and she has her perspective. So Sumi, you want to answer those questions from your point uh, of view? Yeah, actually, it depends on the type of question. So this time, actually, evaluation plans. So actually, it doesn't require a lot of literature review. Mm -hmm. So it's OK. So no yeah. literature review, that's fine. You can you know, make a clear plan. But you know, other types of requires more literature review. For example, current study, for example, the other types. So this time we don't have that question. So maybe mm. you may have that kind of question. At that time, you mm. need to add more literature review. So actually, I recommend to just open the Google Scholar and then I use search engine and then ready to you know, <laughs> search. So actually, they recommend to, you can use any resources for your answer. Mm -hmm. So you can just make everything. So for example, just like, you know, at least actually I made all a template, you know, according mm -hmm. to different questions that actually I created four or five different templates for myself. Wow. And then I use, and then I can save 10 minutes. You know, that's because already, you know, make a, you know, yeah, template and title mm -hmm. and each yes. section, even actually I edited each, each section, you know, introduction and title and reference. Yeah, stuff like yeah. That. if you can even yeah. have something and there already, a, that's definitely yeah. As for the literature, actually I make a list and then actually I come up with some idea based on the, you know, the list of classes that I took from the mm. IS department. And mm. then I made a directory actually folder. Mm. And then I already searched for some, you know, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I it's three to five, like yeah, that. right? And then I can make, uh, you know, the reference list and then I can summarize some, you know, several sentences for them. That's because I can remember, you know, memorize everything. Mm. So it it is helpful, but actually I don't use that this time. That's because mm. it's just you know evaluation mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. But actually, you took the other class. That actually, that class teaches the how to you know make an evaluation plan. So actually, I used that template. So it was mm. really yep. good. Yeah, that's it. So did that help, Aisha? Yes, it did. Thanks. <laughs> okay, now forget everything they said, because if Dr. Bond's reading it, he wants references. <laughs> Lots of them. No, I'm just kind of kidding. I so just on the side. I, I, you know, when I'm reading one of these critiques, and I do see references that are accurate and informative, and show that you've kind of know that's impressive. It doesn't pass or fail you, but it can add to um, my perspective of what uh, of your understanding of being in being able to do the critique. If I if I see you have. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot, but if I see you have some references and, you know, sometimes students just put the, the name of the author and the area and just say, I can't find the reference right now, but I know this person has uh, addressed this topic and that'd be okay. It's not the best, but it'd be, it'd be you know, if, it's, if you do know that there's someone who's researching this area and just don't have time to find it, you can list their names at the end under the reference section and, um, and that's, that will help too. So, you know, don't get panicked about the exact reference. Although, if you have it, that's great. But you know, you know, we we understand you're under a time crunch, and yeah. you're providing us with as much uh, of your information and your perspective as mm -hmm. you can under those constraints. And Mangwan faced some. I know you faced some constraints at the end, just trying to get it all done and submitted, right? And <laughs> very stressful at the end. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> So why don't you keep going, uh, uh, you know, go ahead. Yeah, since we are talking about references, um, I would say really don't worry about the format um, during this exam. Um, you will find some database that already provide APA reference. Just go there, click, and then copy paste. Yeah. Um, I, I So you are not writing the dissertation. Don't worry too much about checking, you know, whether the title are capitalized, you know, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, some journals, if you find the article in the journal, they'll they'll have a, a link that says cite as. And if you click that, they'll tell you how to cite it. So you don't have to look all over the place. Um, Elsifer journals, Springer journals, I think do that. There's certain journals, uh, publishers, I, I should say, that, that offer that. Not everyone, yeah. but increasingly, I see that increasingly. So do check the 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 DOI the you know the the the, the document locator 
uh, website and at the document locator website, they'll have Ha'oe's to cite it. Yeah. I know Google Scholar provides that perfectly. Yes. Right, this option, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mangwan, go ahead. You're muted, Mangwan, but that's okay. Okay. So um, like you take a quick look at the article critique um, article I did. Um, so my structure, you know, you cite the article you critiqued um, on the top. And then I did a article reveal, um, which I briefly summarized purpose and context, research questions, methods, uh, findings, implementation, consultation, uh, sorry, not consult conclusion. <laughs> um, so these common, common sections, uh, strength, weakness, but this is just a quick summary. After this, um, this is the critique. So I start dive into um, each part, literature reveal and uh, the theoretical framework, research methods, design method, and um, analysis procedure, the results, um, implementations of the research. You may not have the exact structure. You may just say, I write a more, you know, brief, brief summary and then start the critique um, directly. I feel my structure, this structure, I revealed um, the R nice R six ninety, the research in IST course, because that course, the the professor led you through several article critique assignments, right, or say activities. Um, this is the structure that course adopted, so I adopt the same structure. Um, I strongly recommend you go back to reveal what you did. Uh, regarding article critique in the R690 course, and then set up a template. Yeah, uh, this one, I really didn't cite much references. I think um, only a couple of them. And I prepared those references in advance because in those uh, research foundation courses, you must have read some books, right? Textbooks and uh, articles about research methodologies. Um, so for example, to increase the validity of uh, a qualitative research, right? You should um, always have, or say, try to have um, experts checking or peer checking, you know, things like this, which textbook or which article um, said about this. And then I prepared the, the references already. So during the day, I see, oh, it has this problem. And then um, I put in that reference. So you do need, you do want to uh, have some preparation for the article critique question. And then um, the next day, day two, so you will have a um, committee question, but that's a presentation and which will have a couple of um, faculty members, your advisor, and then another member from your committee. Um, I have a picture here. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bunk. He took a nice screenshot while I was in the, uh, day two. So this is from day two, question three. Um, Dr. Brash and uh, Dr. Bunk, they were my advisors. So um, you will collaboratively create a series of questions related to your dissertation. So this one is, a, is related to your dissertation. You will create uh, the questions with your professor, with your advisors, and then during the day, um, you present your answers. So you will prepare, this one you will prepare in advance. You prepare a PowerPoint answering those questions. And then um, during this, um, I remember it's an hour and a half, you just prepare um, the answers and you just present the answers you prepared. Yeah, so this is question three. I feel this one is low stress um, compared to day one. <laughs> okay, it's um, me again, question, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Question. I was under the impression they said once you get the committee question, you're supposed to write a paper. No, nope, you, you don't need oh. to. You don't need to write a paper. Um, Which one is the four thousand word paper Dr. Bonk was talking about? Oh no, uh, actually, you needed to submit the paper. So oh, they I want forgot. That. Yes, oh. twenty five hundred <laughs> word document. That's a two weeks before you oh have to yeah 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 you do yeah. need to you need to write out your answer yes yeah. yes and yeah, yeah. two weeks before yes yeah. and then based on that you come up with a presentation right okay. that's correct <laughs> <laughs> thank you for me yeah it's about four thousand word maximum um it, it used to be two thousand and twenty five hundred but we've increased it to because everyone was trained to write more and 
and we were eyes having people revise and add more. So we just, just made it a 4,000 plus references, plus appendices. And that you st should start working on your question now with your advisor. And that gets submitted on um, a, a September 21st, I think, or around that time. And then you get a month to work on it. So you're gonna turn it in on October 21st or about that time. I forgot the exact date. Mm. But you send the, you know, I sent you examples. And so you can draft something like those examples and send it to your committee and they'll revise it. And they will not, probably not share it with you until September 21st, but they will take what you've written and use that as a base to come up with a, a better question. They all have to be, you know, what you, you're doing a draft. I mean, you know, we, we will try and narrow, oftentimes students try to do too much in this question. So we'll try and narrow it. And Meng Wan suffered from that, that syndrome of trying to do too much, I think. And we narrowed hers a little bit. I don't know about soon me, I can't remember, but um, <laughs> you know, that's typical. And then, um, then yeah, you present it on that second day, um, usually on a Friday. Thursday will be day one of Quals and Friday will be day two. And it's in early November this time. I think it's uh, around um, election day, maybe, um, or before. It's just before election day. So it's, uh, it's the third and fourth of November. And it is October 21st that the call the, that that paper is due the 21st on Friday by midnight, I think. Mm -hmm. And we'll send it out to you on November on, on October 21st. So uh, September 21st, we will send that to you um, from from your advisor. Yep. yep. Okay, move on to tips for dissertation proposal, uh, writing the dissertation. Um, I'm, I'm going to go through these points quickly. So the first one, consult with your advisor, advisors and decide on a topic as early as you can. And then after that, study your topic, dissect your topic into two to three constructs. At least, and this is what uh, Professor Bowling <laughs> instructed us to do, and I find it really helpful. So give you an example. Huh? This is my dissertation topic, um, a study of scaffolding practices for enhancing learning engagement in course networking. This is the platform my team is designing and developing. Uh, it's an academic social network site. Yeah. So how do I dissect my topic into three constructs? Um, so. The first one is SNS for learning in higher education. Um, SNS is sent for social networking sites. And then learning engagement and scaffolding. So I dissect it into three constructs. Then you will be able to dive into the theories and frameworks for each. Um, yep, so this is an example. And Sumi may uh, share more about her topic later. And um, Literature review definitely is very important and that goes first. Um, I strongly recommend you set up an appointment with the School of Education librarian. So I set up one from their website and uh, um, the librarian was very helpful. She um, asked me what is the topic I'm going to um, write my dissertation on. And then using that topic, um, she introduced, she, she actually searched the topic in various education data sites. Um, and then I pinned this link here. Uh, whoops, so didn't open in a new window. I'm going to put this one in the chat box. So if you want to come here and take a look, um, this is the link she gave me. And then it has um, so many education data sets. Um, I really like, let me see if they change it recently. Um, I really like this education research complete. And then this is the site actually I searched during the day one exam. Um, Cause most of the article from here, if I remember correctly, this is the one, um, they all have the, the, the correct APA reference. <laughs> so, and then I also like the search results, but um, you want to set up a appointments with the education, school of education librarian. And then based on your topic to see which data site and data sites, right, could be multiple, um, will find the best results for your study. Um, going back to that PowerPoint. Okay. 
And uh, um, well, so start thinking about your study design as early as you can. After you uh, conduct some literature review, you will have a idea about the research design. Um, then talk to your advisors, um, tweak your ideas. So I feel after you already have an idea, um, relatively solid idea about your study design, the majority of your proposal is already done. <laughs> um, and in terms of writing, try to, first, try to finish the first version as soon as you can. Don't worry too much about the grammar, spelling, all of those. And then you will revise um, multiple times to perfect it. Um, so this is my overall dissertation uh, proposal experience. Some final tips. So in terms of the exam, qualifying exam, I recommend you prepare as much as you can, uh, but don't worry too much. I feel I worry too much, especially after I already took the exam. Um, I feel I didn't locate my time well. I did really bad. You know, I had uh, grammar issues, misspelling. <laughs> um, but then the results came out um, very, very, um, I think it's very exciting, very good. Um, so I would say don't worry too much, even at this stage, enjoy the process um, of reviewing what you have learned the past few years and um, just um, put out the best work you can uh, during the exam. So you can see the on day two, really, I from this picture, you don't see um, I'm that stress, right? It's an it's a, uh, enjoyable experience. Long one. We have a yeah. question on the side. Yeah. Rachel, you want to pose your question? Yeah, I was wondering, did you do the actual proposal, not just the stuff you do in R795? Did you mm -hmm. do the full proposal concurrently with preparing for quals? Yes, yes. Do you have um, the, the department recommends you to do that. And okay. I think these two things, they don't contradict each other. Um, they actually help each other. So yeah. You, you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually take out, I took out part of my uh, proposal as the answer for questions three, <laughs> the committee question. Yeah. And yeah, it's acceptable. And uh, I think it's helping you uh, look into your dissertation. And um, um, during the process, you revise, you make revisions. Um, so yeah. If I, I recommend you do these two things together, and that's what the department recommends as well. Okay. Yeah. Sume, you want to add to that or not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> what I want to say. Yeah, that's because I feel that the committee question is to help students to you know figure out and then start their dissertation. That's the reason why they. And then actually, in my case, after oral presentation, I got really good feedback. Mm. And then I can update yeah, my approach a little bit. Yeah, so that was really good. So actually, you know, two, day two is not stressful. It's really helpful. So don't be stressful with the, you know, the day two. Just day one is a little bit stressful. <laughs> yeah, that is why, yeah. So let me correct a little bit what each of them have said. <laughs> um, Meng Wan said, you don't have to worry about your grammar. You can just, she, I think she was implying that you can just rely on Dr. Bonk to revise it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do heavily edit things uh, as both of them know. So I'm just kidding on both accounts. Um, and, and they too can have a little bit of tension. It won't be a total smooth ride because you, mm -hmm. you've never presented that before to anyone else. So you don't mm -hmm. know um, so you want to practice, you know, yeah. you want to practice that a few times so you feel more comfortable with your presentation. You also can test your slides and the equipment. If you have any things special to show, you want to check all those connections because you don't want to get in there and not have the tech, something in the technology work for you and then you're bogged down. So do some practices and, you know, try and practice with the computer you might be using 10 feet away. So you're not just reading everything from the screen, you have to learn and memorize it or try and practice where you don't even see the slides and you try and memorize it and so forth. Now I'll be giving you many of these presentation and publishing tips later in the semester. But today, if I, we have time after break, I'm gonna go through some things with you today on dissertation writing and revising and all that. So I'm gonna try and have maybe 
six or seven different times I'm lecturing about writing and revising a dissertation and other kinds of things this semester. I'll start with the end of a long workshop I give. I'm going to start with dissertation because you're all working on dissertation. I'll start with that advice. So Mangwan, I think, is done with her presentation and she needs to leave around seven. Does anyone have final questions for her? Small, oh, I just have a small question. Kim, do you mind if I go first? Um, on one, just, I guess my question is, you were working full time while taking R795 and doing all of this and you have all your other, so Two is young that kids. right? Two young yeah, girls. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just wanted to hear you say yes to that. Yeah, yeah, I... I don't know whether I want to look back. <laughs> um, the time, but the time also went by quickly. You know, it's assignment after deal after deal. Um, I did spend my weekend time. Um, I remember I drove to office to have the quiet time for myself. Um, Sunday afternoon study um, for five six hours. Um, did that for a few weeks before the exam. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. She also faced the loss of her advisor. Her advisor moved to Texas. I was not, I was her master's advisor. And when she came back for her doctorate, they didn't assign her to me. I, I don't understand why. They just didn't understand that I should have been her EDD advisor as well. But um, her advisor left. So she was kind of in limbo for a while and, and didn't work on anything with her dissertation for a while. There was a big gap. So it wasn't an automatic thing for Meng Wan. So you, how, how many year gap did you kind of have? I, I took some semester off because um, I had two kids uh, yeah. when I was pregnant or after giving birth. I took some semester off. Yeah. 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 It took me about seven years to finish all of the courses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with kids in there, I think you was the same. It took some time. How many months? How many semesters did you take off, you? I took three years off. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's not unusual at all. Um, so uh, Kim or Ben, who has a question there? I have a question. Um, what is your dissertation title again? Sure. Um, the title is. A <laughs> I'm reading off the screen, a study of scaffolding practices for enhanced learning engagement in course networking, CN, that's my learning, uh, that's my work context. It's an academic social networking site. So let me share my screen one more time so everyone can see the title, the exact title. Because it kind of relates to my second question, mm -hmm. okay. which is what is the constructs that you used again? Because um, this sure. is something that I'm really sure, sure, interested sure. in. I will show you. So if you look at the content, the, the title, I chunk yeah. it to three uh, constructs. Scaffolding is one, scaffolding practices, and then um, learning engagement is one. I know it's super big. And uh, and it's uh, engagement is something really controversial, right? People have different definitions, and uh, um, um, they measure different aspects of engagement. Um, so I have engagement um, as another one, and then um, academic social. No, 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 sorry, not academic social networking sites for learning in higher ed. That's another construct. Okay. You can define each construct a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So if I want, I could uh, narrow this construct to maybe online engagement, right? I can do that. Um, but here I have learning engagement. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I, can I ask a question about the three construct? Do you define the three construct while you're preparing for the committee question? Uh, that actually, was after that you should. I think defining, um, having definitions, this is the foundation work. Yes, I have. So if, you, if I go a little bit further off my slide, you can see, um, well, actually, this is my, this is not the PowerPoint for day two, the, for answering the committee question. Um, this is my dissertation proposal PowerPoint. The other one, yes, after uh, this slide, I have the definition um, for um, SNS, social networking sites, I have definition for learning engagement and um, scaffolding. I have definition for each. So Meng Wan, go to the next slide. Yes. This was her creative leap of insight in seeing where the gap was in the research. If you look at this um, 
what do you call this? Uh, it's not a table figure. I'm not sure what uh, this comparison and contrast um, continua between student directed, instructor directed, um, and yep. guided and yep. academic SNS in general. Yep. She was looking at you know where the research was being done. Yep. And where and the gaps the lie. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is so this part, these slides, um, this part is for my construct number one. I don't have theory here. I look into the literatures related to using social networking sites for learning in higher ed. And then mm -hmm. I plot these researchers' studies into um, these four quadrants. And um, for for uh, then for learning engagement here, I have a um, theory or model. This is the dimensions of engagement um, of the uh, double helix model from Barclay Major. So here I have a theory. And um, when I move on to the third construct, um, I talked about measure, how to measure engagement. Um, so when I come to the, uh, the scaffolding, um, this is the third construct, right? Here, um, based on some key literature, some studies, um, I come up with a table eventually. So it's based on one framework. It's from it, this is based on the framework from one of the 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 the, the study, um, and look into scaffolding practices from strategy, provider, timing, and types. So um, then I summarize um, based on the literature what are some common scaffolding strategies in the SNS environment. And then later, I'm going to use this structure when I observe scaffolding practices in the CN um, uh, environment on the CN platform. So Mengwan, you might want to share both sets of slides from your dissertation um, defense, as well as from your day two quals, and then they could sure. compare what the slides are like and what the presentation is like between a day two qual and a dissertation um, defense or even proposal. And yeah, the complexity um, okay. of that. Yeah, yep. it might be beneficial. You can see my screen, right? So yeah. this is my committee question presentation on day two. And um, actually the questions we developed together um, and then the official questions I received only touch on two of my three constructs. <laughs> um, so if you look at the title slides, SNS for learning in higher education, right? I have definition of SNS first. And then this is what you saw earlier. This is based on my literature reveal, right? The four quadrants of uh, um, the use of SNS in higher ed. And I specifically talk about each quadrant um, and then some, um, signature, I call them signature uh, literatures here. And um, I talked about my study will be in this area, then moved on to scaffolding practices. So you see the, the engagement construct was not touched. Yeah, um, I don't have that. Um, and then the scaffolding practices, I begin with definition of scaffolding. And um, at least some eff effective scaffolding practices based on some um, literature. And then um, this is another one. So some of the literature I get into the details and uh, um, here is the table. And then I revise this table based on feedback during this presentation. And so the revised version is in my dissertation proposal, yeah. So this is, if you compare these two tables, they're not exactly the same because I took the feedback from um, day two and implemented the feedback into my dissertation proposal. And do you develop your proposal in the summer? What is the timeline after you, um, I guess I'm just curious about the timeline. How fast do you have to get your proposal ready and then do the presentation? Yes, so actually the, um, the dissertation course, uh, 670, no, six, um, 695, right? <laughs> Sorry, this course, 695? 795. 795, 795. Yeah, so 795, at the end of the course, you should submit a draft of your proposal. 
So that draft of your proposal should be done at the end of this course. And then, um, so I spent about a couple of months to make revisions based on feedback. I submitted to my, my advisor, Dr. Bank, to give me very detailed feedback. Um, and then um, I also completed my IRB during this time. Um, and it's because I remember July 4th holiday. So I wanted to present my proposal before the holiday, but um, other advisors were not available. So that got pushed to um, after July 4th, if I remember July the 6th. And then you will receive some feedback from your uh, proposal presentation, the defense, right, from the defense. And then um, I made some, I spent about two to three weeks and finalized my proposal, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so two, I think at least it will take about two months, <laughs> two to three months. Okay, you can stop the sharing. I think at this point, um, yeah. you have it's seven o'clock or almost. We got one minute to seven. Ben, did you have a final question for her? Uh, it, I think it's more of a wish than a question, but uh, on the qualifying exam, the, you mentioned that your topic was micro learning. Uh, were you given any sort of hints about that ahead of time or like a tip off that micro learning might be something that you should focus on? Um, so that's the question I received from the department. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, Dr. Bunk, may I show that question? Because it's so simple. It only a few sentences. Yeah, Is sure, that okay? sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly present that exactly that question to you. Um, and I'll give you, while she's looking, I'll tell you how that question is designed. Mm. Dr. Brush looks at tech trends and he flips through it and he says, oh, this would be a good article to give as the critique question. And there you have it. And he's on sabbatical now, so Dr. Kwan will be doing it. Mm. Um, Dr. Kwan That's might do it in a different way. He might ask all of us. A, Dr. Brush normally asks all of us for a, for a good article to critique. And I bet you nobody responds to him. So he just picks one. <laughs> Maybe once in a while, somebody, you know, um, you know, in their hectic schedules says, oh, I'll take a look at Tech Trends. And, or it's typically a Tech Trends article. And so your practice exam in Canvas are all former questions that Dr. Brush has found in Tech Trends. So they're good examples. Yeah. Yeah. So you the see reason te Tech Trends is limits you to so many words. And so there's an automatic critique in any article that they need to explain more. Well, they can't because that's the maximum, usually the maximum. Usually when you're revising, you can add more words. That's another tip. You can usually submit an article based on the number of words and limit. And then when they ask for revisions, you can often go well over the limitations of word count for most of the journals, not all. And so that's a sneaky way of getting more words. You can delete all this in, and you'll save those words that you deleted and pop them in during the revision time. Um, just to see, I hate giving up words, but I, you know, I, I'll cut anything to get it published. You know, so um, anyways, Mangwan, you've got a question there. What is it? So there's the question. This is exactly the question. Yeah. 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 yeah so just you, this much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you want to read the first sentence? or second two, first two sentences? Um, well, this part actually is the core part you want to pay close attention to because you want to uh, directly address all of these. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get time to come up with a lot of sample questions. So earlier when I show you my that that um that my answer right that's now the final version of it but you see um i don't have a section called sample questions i should but i run out of time so i mentioned i give a, a couple of uh example questions while i talk about the evaluation um uh procedure or the the, the data the data collection part yeah so my one is you are you using canva for your illustrations Yes, yeah, earlier that um, infographic is from Canva. Yeah. This one is from Canva. I yeah, used the I'm template. using at Canva now for something, yeah. It has a yeah. free version and I, yeah, I, I, I bought the, the paid version. version. Yeah, the paid version is only 120. It's well worth it, but free is good too. Um, okay. Thank you. It's currently free for educators, I think too. So. 
Yeah, the free version, I feel it's enough. <laughs> enough for me. I didn't get the watermark off, but um, I think you don't yeah. mind. <laughs> if, you, if you're doing fancy teamwork, the paid version comes in handy um, and some sharing and so forth. Yeah. yeah, there's some powerful features in the paid version, but there's enough in the free. It's a freemium. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to move to Sunmay because um, we've gone, you know, to past an hour here. And I know Mangwan needs to run off, but let's thank Mangwan. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you. I hope it's helpful and wish all of you the, the best of luck. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mangwan. We'll Thank talk you, soon. Dr. Thank you, Dr. Bunk. Bye bye, everyone. So, as I was saying, uh, Mangwan's very skillful and um, thorough in her presentations. So, um, Sunme, she's covered probably many topics that you were going to talk about, but it's okay to mention a couple times too, so people are clear about it. Um, so. Um, soon may how long you got about 15 20 minute presentation then we'll take a break yeah i think so actually if you guys want to take a break maybe after a break we can do that it's up to you um it might be good so my part will be shorter i think so why don't we do well so what i might do is hit pause if i can hit the pause button on this I'm recording. We're going to hear from Soon Me Soul in part two of our 795 week two. And she's going to give us her perspective on what Meng Wan just covered in terms of dissertation proposals and qualifying exams and there, thereof. In, well, in one week, uh, we'll hear from uh, Rob Elliott and we will also hear from Sihang Chao. And both Rob and Sihong have passed their dissertations uh, this past summer or late spring and or yeah, spring slash winter in the past few months. And they'll also walk through what we're hearing today. And then the fourth person that we're going to have come in, Aaron, Chris, will talk about publishing your qualifying exams. So and publishing your dissertation and dissertation defenses and other kinds of things Erin will talk about uh, because her and I did publish her dissertation or part of her committee question anyhow. So I thought that'd be a good perspective to get. And Erin will be here. I'm trying to see on the calendar. We have Adam Mills for IRBs coming on um, September 27th. Uh, Erin's the week before, September 20th. Um, so yeah, so we'll have, we have four kind of, they overlap a bit. And then I don't think we have anyone else like that coming in. Um, we'll have a lot of ask me, ask me sessions, Q and A kinds of sessions with experts. And uh, ask Tom Reeves anything, and I ask Mike Thomas anything. Ask you know someone else. I, I have three of these set up where we can ask about. You can ask me your dissertation question. The big thing that's perplexing. I had asked Kim to kind of. I think it was Kim to ask to present her dissertation question to us. So after Sinmei, we'll go Kim before I present anything tonight. Um, we'll have a short reflection on Kim's dissertation this week. And then next week, did I ask Rachel to be the one or to ask Ben or did, who did I ask for next week? Someone, what, Rachel? You mentioned that was a possibility. Okay, possibility, Ben. Okay, so maybe next week, yeah. I was nominating um, Ben. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So he took the nomination and went with it. Okay, so Sumei, why don't you take over and I'll stop blabbing here. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I first met Sumei, I should say, in Vancouver at a booth, oh. uh, at a poster session where she was presenting her poster at Ed, Ed Media Conference in 2016 uh, during the big gigantic poster sessions they have at the end of one of the days, maybe a second day there. Oh, actually, um, let me fix actually, I saw me for paper, not poster. Paper, so, okay. Paper yeah, session. Not poster. poster. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. she was doing robotics maybe and mobile learning. Yeah, at the mobile. Time. Yeah, mobile, mobile learning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Actually, you know, at least cover a lot. So maybe it's a kind of you know, lipid, but it's helpful for you to understand fully what you know qualifying exam. So my name is Sumi, and then as Dr. Bonk said, I passed the qualifying exam last semester and also finished my dissertation proposal defense only this year months. Yeah, 
so brand new. <laughs> okay. So first of all, congratulations on being ready for your dissertation. <laughs> it's really good. But are you feeling confusing, right? And afraid, nervous, right? That exactly I felt that feeling before, exactly six months ago, right? But don't worry, I can share my experience and tips learned from the last semester. So I try to you know, add more details, especially for qualifying exam. That's because the last semester, I didn't get any information detail about this. Actually, I have to dig out. So yeah, so it was really hard time. So first of all, while taking this class, you do the following. The first to take and pass qualifying exam and then work on dissertation proposal. And if possible, just to finalize your dissertation proposal, right? And then after this class, you do the following. The finalized dissertation proposal with your advisor and then recommend schedule dissertation proposal defense ASAP because the professors are really busy. It's really hard to schedule. Actually, I scheduled two months before in advance. And then actually after finalizing your proposal, just to start your IRB. But actually, I think that you took the R690 class, maybe I think. Actually, you work on the IRB submitting. Maybe I think that's because I refer to that document. It was really helpful. That's because I did it by myself. And then first time I got the revision, but actually that was a totally different one. So I can fix it really quickly. And then I passed to 10 days, actually that one. But usually it takes four weeks. So I provide some tips on how to pass the IRB quickly, okay? And then have a dissertation proposal defense. It's it that I know until now. That's because I just started my data collection. So I have no idea about the passing the dissertation defense, okay? So that is why maybe next semester I can have more information. Okay, the first of all, qualifying exam. Originally two day exam, the before on site, even if for EDD student from now online. So you think that, oh, maybe we can log in some system and then you can answer. No, exactly just email exchange, okay? So day one, you will have two writing tests. So the first one is start to 7.50 a.m. and then three and a half. And after then one hour, 20 minute break, lunch break, after then exactly same thing, okay? And then day two is order presentation. So actually you have to present your committee questions answer, okay? So I can explain more detail. So first of all, day one written test. So usually one of the question is analysis skill. So article critic, exactly. So you have to practice this one. That's because always this one should be, okay? And then the other one is research skill. So develop a research or evaluation plan. And this time actually evaluation plan, but nobody knows, maybe discuss current research. So there are maybe three and two or three in types of questions possible. So you have to practice the three question type, I think. So day one written test, actually before the day one, you will get the schedule just like this table. So you can see the my name, the last one, right? And then you will see the my schedule. So my starting time is 10.50. That's because I live in California. So really only time for me, only 5 a.m. So I, you know, reschedule my, you know, qualification exam test. And after that, in second question. So, and then receive an email from Dr. Brush with a question. It's a Word document. So you will suppose to read and then write a response to a question with a Word document. And then after three and a half, you can finish before if you want, but at least three and a half at the time, you have to send the document to the doctor brush. And then don't leave, just wait. That's because you have to get the confirmation email from doctor brush, okay? So you are done, I got it. And then just the first question is done. The same thing happened 
go for the second question. Okay, exactly understand? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, proceed. So yeah. well, let's change one thing. This year, this semester, maybe all year, you'll substitute the name Dr. Brush with Do uh, Dr. Kwan in place of Dr. Brush. But otherwise, everything that she said is accurate. The second thing that I'll add is that when Professor Bowling teaches this class, she has students required to meet with their advisor several times about their dissertation proposal. I have a different perspective. I do not require you to meet several times with your advisor to tell them what's happening. If I'm good at helping you mold uh, this dissertation proposal, I'm saving your advisor a lot of time. If I'm bad, then I've made you know, a big mistake by not requiring it so that you're not getting the right feedback. Um, but I, I've chosen the, the latter approach, the, the, well, the former or the latter, whatever. I've chosen that approach because there is a, we're doing a lot of things. I, I'm, you know, I'm in charge of this class. So I think you know, I'm, uh, I can give you some, I've been around the block a few times um today is the anniversary of my arrival 30 years ago today at IU so I've seen many dissertations um and so um you know I'm not but I do hope that you talk to your advisor during this class during the process a couple of times let them know what you're we're working on you know inform them of it but I'm gonna I'm I'm not mandating mandatory meetings I don't think anyone needs additional meetings um there's enough meetings in the day with all these other things but given this is your advisor and you're working on a dissertation you'll probably schedule a meeting with your advisor during this class or two meetings or whatever but i'm not requiring it okay so that's you know the yeah anyhow um uh but but yeah but you know if there's an issue that your advisor raises about your dissertation that I didn't pick up on, let me know. You know, um, they, they might have you refine your questions. They might have you change the scope of your literature. You might have change your title. I mean, that's, they should be working with you on it. But again, I'm not requiring it. I'm kind of, you know, suggesting it, uh, that you just let them know what you're working on. You don't have to have meetings with them unless you want to. Um, go ahead, Sune. Yeah, actually, I share some details. So you can use any available resources. So it's like an open book test. So you can just set up everything if you need before and then bring your snack water, you know, whatever. Okay. And then use MS Word. Because actually, Alice recommend to create your own template. Okay. Just don't copy others. That's plagiarism. Okay. Just so you have to develop your template before. And then if you need, ask for rescheduling test time, you know? So for me, actually, I reschedule. That's because it's really all the times I can make it and I can focus, right? That's the reason. And then the test result will be notified via email, individual email, three weeks later and pass and fail. I don't know there is, you know, revision, but I don't know about just to pass and fail. So maybe possible if it's not, I have no idea. Just I passed it luckily. So I, I don't know about this, but yeah. And then day two, order presentation. So before order presentation, you start to your right dissertation topic related questions, right? So develop and then you have to send them to your committee member, usually, you know, advisor. And then receive a committee question by email six weeks in advance from your advisor. And then you have one month to write the you know, paper, report, kind of a report to answer those questions. And then two weeks, you know, and then make a presentation document. And then actually that day, you will get the Zoom link and join Zoom and present your response from 10 to 15 minutes. And then Comedy, you know, members ask some questions, right? So you have to answer them and they, you will be moved to waiting room. That's because, you know, comedy members will discuss something and they come back and you have to listen to their feedback. And then right away, you will get the result. So pass the revision and, you know, fail. But I think they usually revision. That's because they recommend some, you know, great idea so you can update but it doesn't mean the fail, okay? Just anyway, pass, but you have to revise a little bit usually, I think. So don't worry, okay? 
So no problem. So that's because actually you have four months, four weeks. So it's really enough. And then you can recycle this idea, this content for your dissertation proposal. So it's really good. And then it's a really important point. That's because I experienced that one. That's because the first two day one, it's really tricky and I have no idea. So actually that is my tips idea. So first of all, I found a study group. So actually starting this class, I asked some of my colleagues, do you want to join my study group? That's because I think that it's really hard to cover all topics that I learned from ISD. So it's really huge. So actually we made the actual four people and then create a Google Drive. And then we can share any resources we think that it will be the topic for the questions. And then we meet regularly, usually every two weeks. Actually, first time we set the get together and then take a test, but it's really long. So usually during the week we did, and then just in the meeting, we can brainstorm. That's because actually during the week, actually we did practice questions and then we give some feedback to other members. And then in the meeting, we can discuss, oh, this point is better. Oh, maybe we can use that point for my template, something like that. So we can elaborate our template you know, based on others' yeah, feedback. So actually it's really good. That's because the first of all, mentally I feel better. That's because I'm not alone. That's because other students feel the same feeling, right? The first time we are all upset, I don't know about that, I'm so nervous. But, you know, regularly we got used to these questions and then we feel better and then we share more resources. And then it, every time we brought to new ideas and then support to each other. So it's a really good idea. So just to try. <laughs> and then review three question types. So, so in my case, actually, there are three question set, really. So the right one is my template. So actually, I made a template before. So actually, I create different to, you know, MS Word. So every time I got this question, I can use that template. So I don't spend any time for formatting or just a section, something like that. So, and then the first of all, in my case, I search for the model paper for three types of papers so from Google or Google search or just based on the, you know, classes that I took before. And then I read and then develop my own template. So it was really helpful. That's because I don't worry about any plagiarism. That's because I developed this one. So totally different one. And then number three is it collect article resources. Actually uh, about the current research topic, it's really hard. That's because from my experience, three and a half, it's not sufficient time to search available resources and then summarize. Even, you know, I don't have time to read that one. Right. So actually, I come up with some ideas based on the list class list. And then that one is actually my folder. So collaborative learning, gamification, mobile learning, something like that. And then actually, I collected related articles and these two, three to five articles per each topic. And then I read and then I made a list of references and then make a summary a little bit really short summary of each topic. That's because just to remind me about this topic. And then when I, you know, write it and then I can remember, oh, there is, and then just to check. So, and then if needed, I yeah, search one more time, but usually I can recycle those ones. So I highly recommend. And then actually try to take many practice questions. So actually last semester I did two times that's because you, two, question sets were provided, it's really just like a real exam. And then after taking that question, I realized that that is really short time. You know, the first to try, you know, even I couldn't finish very well. That's because it was really short time and then I was very shocked. Oh my God, it's really short time. So actually after then I make uh, some kind of a timeline for, for example, read the question and then five minutes and then lay out, you know, five minutes, something like that. And then read the article, for example, article critic actually three 30 minute reading 
And then first time 10 minutes and 20 minutes is differently. So usually as for the article critics, actually I needed to read two times. So actually I did and 30 minutes and they always just leave the 30 minutes for later. That's because I have to improve the, you know, writing, you know, something like that. So just kind of make allocate some time for me and then just to put the timer. Yeah. And then just to check. So that is my way. So do you have any question about the qualifying exam? Okay. Okay. So actually dissertation proposal, actually, I think the Alice covered a lot. So a little bit I can share. In my case, you know, I think that I'm a little bit smart. That's because I think it takes time to collect the article. So I started my dissertation topic 2020 in 2020. I just started that topic. So always I try to use that topic for you know assignment to when I took other classes, if I can do that, right? And then every time I collected you know, article. So actually I collected over 100, but later I just threw, threw them away. That's because I changed it a lot. And then every time I just threw them away. So I highly recommend just to start it anyway. And then usually I use the, you know, many search engines. So that one is actually Google Scholar. That's because I can see the citation number. So usually I use filtering, latest peer review, English and accessible to for text, that's it. And then just the number of citation. Even if the number of citation is low, that topic is related to me and latest, that's okay. That's because it's brand new. That's the reason why the number of citations is low. So I took it, so something like that. And then make many versions of your proposal. So always I think that that's because I have experience in writing an academic paper before. So no perfect proposal first time. So anyway, the first time usually I start, you know, writing and then repeat and then fix a lot of things, you know? <laughs> yeah, a lot of things, so something like that, yeah. And then I highly recommend is closely interacting with your advisor. Yeah, that's because you always academic advisor can give a very clear answer and clear direction to you. And then carefully take a note of feedback from the oral presentation. Yeah, that, that was really helpful for me. Actually, I took a lot of notes at the time and then I changed it a lot. Yeah. And also Sumer? actually, Yes. Yeah. May. She you made a statement that you started this process in 2020. Was that with this exact dissertation or or with your she's had a couple of different topics. Was that with a previous topic or this topic? No, this topic. Okay. The previous topic is even before starting this degree, I started the topic. But after you know COVID-19 broke out, I changed the, my topic. That's because I my interest to you know was changing. That's yeah. yeah, I and just then, wanted to clarify that because, you know, people might not understand that, you know, sometimes you go through, you have a topic in mind, you, the changes based on circumstances, yeah. current job roles, expectations, exactly. your work workplace, all sorts of things may change uh, what you're set up. And Kim's experience, she might talk about that in, in a few minutes too. So keep going. Um, yeah, so. so actually, and then I recommend to write a simple journal for taking this class. So actually I did. The first time I thought that it's a you know, burden, but it was really helpful. So for example, just to like it, the total list, the total list, and then I, you know, grade out. And then weekly based, I write the usually three and five times I make an entry. And then I can, you know, just to review what I did and what I have to do that, you know, something like that. So it's really helpful. So I think that you have a blog right now. So you can make it that way. And then you can check what I need. That's because of all, from my experience, it's really hard to make the process, you know? That's because every time, you know, I ask about nobody gives a clear direction, you know, after this, you have to do this or something like that. No, yeah, so it's really hard. So actually I make a list to the list and then 
whatever actually I ask her, can I do that? You know, something like that, Dr. Bonk knows that every time I ask her, can I do that right now? You know, something like that, and then get a confirmation and start it and then make it done, something like that, right? And then work with an advisor closely. Actually, Dr. Bonk was really amazing advisor, especially for, you know, scheduling, you know, defense. Actually, I didn't expect that because, you know, all professors were so busy, but actually he made, yeah, I finished him before this semester. Yeah, that's it. And the last tip, schedule proposal defense in advance. And then after class, just to start IRB. That's because I heard that usually IRB takes one month to several months, but it depends on your target sample. So actually I changed my sample. That's because for minor, it takes more time. But actually, I change into other, so it's shorter. Okay, just think about it. And then after this class, take the social behavior researcher CT program before submitting IRB form. That's because I got the rejection. That's because I didn't take this course. Okay, so that is a practical tip. Yeah, that's it. So some people like Doodle to set up schedules to have dissertation defenses. I've moved away from that. And what I do is I talk to the, the, the advisee and I say, well, what are some dates you can make? And then I look at my schedule and I try and come up with a whole bunch of dates both of us can make. And then I contact the member of the committee that I know is around and I share those dates. And then, then we have a whole bunch of dates to share with the third member uh, to pick from. And then they, you know, they usually have one of those dates they can make. But I, I, we try and get the candidate and me to have be in agreement so we don't have to worry about ourselves and we just have to worry about the other two and that that is a much easier way to schedule a meeting um because usually if you do a doodle everyone's going to check one person's going to check they can't make every you know um so it's best to just go to them with a direct email uh with a committee of only three members it's much easier to do than if you had five members for instance where i went which was my experience at wisconsin so um so yeah it's just care. yeah can I answer that question? Yeah, please, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ashid, actually, I think that I'm not sure about your city certificate. Actually, I have one, but that one is basic. This one is a different one. So actually, I have to take this one. Yeah, it's a different. You have to just check the title. That's because I have the basic city certificate oh, before I took from other class. Wow. But that one is different. Yeah, for, you this one is for the research methods class, I think it was the other one that took so, a long time. I think there may be three years I heard that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just Thank to you. check with IIB. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But actually, IIB CT certificate program is really good. Actually, I spent eight hours to finish, but I can't skip. That's because everything is really helpful and then it's really interactive. So just the watching video is a kind of interactive learning. So it's really good and highly recommend. So if you have a time just to start to take this program, it's better, I think. Other questions? Yeah, Ben. Uh, I had a question. Um, so this was back on the qualifying exams. Uh, the folders that you were showing about the uh, recent articles or the, mm -hmm. uh, the trending articles, would you be willing to share those articles? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. But it'd be better to find your own, but you can oh, refer I'll, to the yeah, list. I'll do both. I'll, I'll do both. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions for Sumi? She's already provided a lot of advice during the past almost <laughs> two hours. So yeah, we've exhausted most of the questions I think here, but we're going to have this repeat it again next week one more time with with uh, Zihong and with Rob. So um, yeah, maybe we hold a couple, I guess ask Rob how you can write a dissertation that needs no revisions. Um, <laughs> how you can analyze a data set of 30 million, no, 300 million data points or whatever it was. Uh, it's impressive. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'm gonna show you the syllabus and the Dropbox and I noticed uh, in the Dropbox, uh, well, I noticed in the syllabus, there's not a link to the Dropbox. So I will add that in. 
there, it talked about Dropbox, but there was no link to the Dropbox. I've been sending it's in the it's in the announcements in Canvas. So if you if you can't find something, go to the first or second announcement in Canvas. I've also noticed that uh, all of you completed the pre-task number one of the plagiarism, and we'll get two bonus points for everybody, hands down. I also just noticed that the first assignment, other than the pre-plagiarism test, is due today, which is really due at Friday or Saturday at midnight, uh, you get four day grace period. So yeah, and you'll have another one due in a week. There's a lot of things repeated earlier than in any of my other classes. Um, this has a lot of things kind of to, to, to walk you through the process a bit and, and have small steps and small successes on the way to building a more complex project. So let me share my screen and just jabber on about the syllabus briefly, and then we'll go to Kim and have her pose a question to all of you about her dissertation and see if we can jointly come up with an answer to her question. One or two questions, Kim. Uh, we're not going to answer everything in your dissertation. We're going to just at least just chat with you about it. Um, and that I might also have all of us read what's in the Google Doc on them for an introduction. So um, I need to find. This is the only problem with um, Zoom sharing. The, the, the page that you're on in terms of, um, I think this is the page. Let's see if that works. Okay, so this is uh, the, the syllabus, as you all know. And so in, in here, we've got, and so there's a link back to the syllabus. There's a link to my homepage, blah, 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 in, in here. There are... Um, Lots of tips and advice. And here's the, so the, the points, couple of bonus points, it says for the first, the plagiarism, the statement of goals is 20 points, August 30th, that is today. I arrived on August 30th, 1992, 30 years ago. Um, research questions, September 6th, a week from now. And then you get a break for four weeks. So really the first, do the first two things, which are the, well, they're, they're relatively, you know, painless. Although so questions, let me just say that you can write your proposal and be ready to defend it. And I'd say probably lately, 60% of the time we're changing the research questions at the proposal meeting. So, you know, you'll refine them in here. I'll look at them. And there'll still be other members of the committee that want something a little different. So, you know, yeah, just... Be flexible and um, patient, and you'll get them right eventually. Um, that's the that's probably the number one change I'm seeing lately in dissertations, which is a big thing. <laughs> Just the research questions. Um, so you can see the analysis plan, the draft of prospectus, uh, and the due dates thereof, and so forth. Now there's a, a link here, and I think actually. Um, if I hide the panel at the top, all right, I think I can carry this down here. Okay, there we go. So if we go here, can you see that soon, May? If, uh, okay, so Kim's the first one. We'll skip Kim for a second. Sibahat, I don't think is here. Ishat, um, you want to introduce yourself briefly and say who your advisor, what's, what's right here on the screen so that um, we can all see that with you. Okay, sure. Um, hi, my name is Aisha Balogun. I've had classes with you. Yeah, I see him smiling <laughs> with almost everybody here. Um, my advisor is uh, Krista Gwazuski. Um, for my committee, I also have Dr. Fon as well as Cindy. Yeah, me. Okay. Um, my focus is on science education, simulations in science classroom, project based learning, and what have you. And I actually tentatively, hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing changes. <laughs> Intend to work on um, at least please, explore um, virtual simulations in science classrooms and uh, presenting teachers' perspectives. Mm -hmm. So where I am right now, I have I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about access control and things like that. And obviously, listening to that topic is going to be a lot. So I'm just trying to, fingers crossed, trying to, should I say, limit the scope? And so far, that's practically it. What else was I supposed to say? 
Well, we've got a little extra info about you. Um, if you want to put your talk about your hobbies and interests. Ah, yeah. I like to travel. I like to go to new places. Um, I like to cook, spending time with my family. Uh, married with two kids. One is 13 and one is 10. If you know anything about kids, that's teenage age. Yay. And I teach high school too. So yeah, a lot of those around me. Um, places I would like to travel to. Okay, one of the ways I kind of relax one way or the other, I watch a lot of K movies, Chinese dramas, and I try to, I believe I know how to speak Korean, but Chinese, yeah, with my accent is bad. So <laughs> I decided not to bother with that. So, but obviously I like to travel to uh, places uh, Korea, so I've heard of um, was anyway, some places, Busan, then in China, I'm talking of Sanya, because every time you see Sanya, it's always like one beautiful place and all that. So, yeah, so that's about can, it. You can speak Korean. I think so. Kansamida. Okay. <laughs> hey, Kansamida. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> my son. <laughs> yeah, my son is Korean. Yes. So, I've been <laughs> Korean nine, eight or nine times. Um, and uh, yeah, my father was in Korean War. My son's Korean. Uh, I, yeah, I need to go back. I I, I want to live in Korea someday. Um, <laughs> so next on the list here is Ben. You want to do a brief introduction to yourself and who your advisors are and what what you're studying? Yeah. Uh, so my name is uh, Ben Stevens. I'm currently working for a College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Uh, so my research interest. Uh, one of the avenues is uh, pharmacy faculty de development uh, and physician assistant faculty development. Uh, so pretty interesting, especially on the physician assistant side, uh, not a lot of training uh, specific to education before they start teaching. So kind of looking at the priorities of what a teacher needs to know before they step into the classroom. Uh, so that, that's interesting. I'm a bit of a problem child. Um, so I'm at work now, so like uh, I'm lowering my voice just a little bit. Uh, there's a possibility that I might transition to a position that's more focused on instructional design. Uh, so hopefully gonna hear this week about that. So I might be um, looking for new topics. I have some ideas, but uh, so after this week, I'm either way, I'm gonna be excited to uh, start narrowing in uh, even more. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dr. Lefwich is my advisor. Uh, she's great. Some things about me. Uh, I have a three-year-old at home. Uh, she keeps us busy. Uh, I like to run when I can. Uh, I can't compete with the almost 900 day it's in a row or anything like that, but I do enjoy it. You can buy me a shirt. Um, like most students who want A's do. No, I'm just kidding. No, I mean. <laughs> uh, no I, one of my former students has given me a 900 day hat, I think. Um, so I needed day 950. Anyhow, I, I'll point out the University of Houston has a program in the, with the ed tech program and the medical school. In fact, they have a new medical school there. So if you're looking for a you know, place to do a study, I've got friends at University of Houston in ed tech, uh, learning design and development, and they have a doctoral, a master's, and I think they have a doctoral program now for the medical field there. I also know people at Baylor, a couple of people hired at Baylor in the ed tech field are working at, at there. Um, and I had at one of them as a guest last semester in five, our 511. So in, in the Houston area, there's a huge, you know, medical complex there, as you know, and there's a lot of people getting interested in the medical field uh in, in in the ed tech field who are in the medical field i currently have an article on teaching in the i think med, in the medical field um teaching with technology it's in final review i think it'll be accepted sooner i hope so so i haven't done much but i can share that with you if you're, it's a very short paper with colleagues uh so just remind me um yeah so yeah so thank you and then who do we have you are uh, you next on here uh, yes, I guess I am. Yeah. Um, so my name is Yue Ma. I work at St. Xavier University in Chicago. Um, 
um, I graduated from IST uh, 2012, so 10 years ago. And uh, right now I'm leading an instructional design team. Um, so at the beginning of this class, I was kind of interested in high flex model, especially during the pandemic, all the instructors are kind of required to um, you know, record their class or offer this flexible model to their um, to their students who cannot attend class. So I was at first interested in doing that research, but now like when I see more ideas, I kind of have other two topics and I'm trying to narrow it down. My second topic is um, when we work with faculty members to develop online classes, I know there are so many models, but I found in my university, when we work with faculty, we utilize the backward design model. So you start where they want to achieve and then um, doing you know, all the activity uh, assessment aligned with their objectives. So that's the model we usually go with. And I found it's very effective, especially for new instructors. So I kind of want to do a evaluation for the backward design model. I don't know whether that's a good topic or not. So you're doing some research on that. The third one is recently I'm hiring some instructional designer and I was like kind of curious what make a good instructional designer in higher ed, what knowledge, skill and attitude are necessary for instructional designer in higher ed. So that's kind of my three research topic. I'm still kind of like debating which one I should go with. So I'm trying to schedule a meeting with uh, my advisor, Dr. Brush um, to finalize the topic. Um, and then what other things I, oh, I have Dr. Bunk on, on my committee too. Um, so I also have a three year old. Um, she just attended her first orientation day for her preschool. So that was exciting. Um, and uh, places I want to visit. Oh, my husband and I, we went to Hawaii for our honeymoon and I really like that place. So well, hopefully in the future we can live over there. Um, other things I'd like to do, cooking, traveling. <sighs> Right now, I feel like traveling is really hard to do. So I hope I can go back to China, take my daughter to China. That's where I am from. Um, so I hope she can go there one day with me. Okay, thank you for that. Um, interesting, uh, everyone's got some interesting and different um, dissertation topics. So we have a lot of variety in here. We're gonna learn from a, a lot of people in this class. So thank you. Uh, um, the next one on the list is, I think Shannon, are you still, I think Shannon left, right? So um, she's interested in distance learning, online learning, learner feedback perceptions, and um, medis in the medical school area. So that's, and she's got Dr. Brush and Bowling and Kwan, and she's uh, born in Gary, Indiana. And she has moved to my hometown of Milwaukee and likes hiking, beachcombing, and travel. Okay. Um, Rachel, you're next. All right. Uh, Dr. Bonk is my advisor. And on my committee, I have uh, Dr. B Professor Bowling um, and uh, Professor Bricka Lorenz, who's in the Center for Post Secondary Research. So we're We've been talking about exactly how my committee is going to be set up because um, I know there are some uh, limitations for that. I work at an accreditation agency for post-secondary English language programs. And of course, my what drew me to that work was my previous teaching and program management experience in an intensive English program. So I've just been steeped in that for a long time, teaching, program directing, uh, quality assurance. And I really wanted to, uh, get, do, <laughs> I wanted to do a get it done dissertation. And I have access through my job to heaps and heaps of data that no one explores. But after um, considering kind of the political considerations of working with that data as a student, I decided I'm going to move to my second area of interest because I just, looking at it from the agency's point of view, they have to be really careful about what the results of any research on their data would be. And so anyway, so I'm, I'm gonna leave that aside and I'll pursue some research in that area after I finish my program. I think that'll be, um, Kind of better 
uh, for everybody. And the other area I'm interested in is related to violations in academic in integrity uh, in online environments. So basically cheating uh, in online environments. And what I, I, <laughs> as a teacher, I, you know, I've dealt with the students who've cheated in a variety of environments and have always been really interested in, um, you know, not just what drives them, because to me, it's similar to, you know, just how they're trying to learn anyway. I would always have students who struggle say, I read that. I read that 10 times. I did, I studied for 12 hours and blah, 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 right? You're having this discussion, but really getting them to tell you, like, what do they think they were doing when they studied? What, why did they eventually make that decision to cheat and so on? Um, super interesting to me. And then to look at what happens after a student cheats, because a lot of students cheat at some level. Anyway, I'm going to try to keep it short and not uh, talk too much about my topic. I'm quite interested in it, but I want to see at the faculty level, the department level, and the institution level, what happens when students cheat. If they're drummed out, does the learning stop? If they're kept in, does the cheating stop? And things like that. So that's what I want to look at. Um, I just wrote a timeline of two years. I don't have a firm timeline. I'm originally born in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I don't know, if you're interested in that, we can talk about barbecue and jazz. Um, it's awesome. I want to live in Corolla, North Carolina. My husband and I uh, got really lucky and we bought a beach house there. And I come from a very poor family and uh, I'm the first person in my family to finish college. And I am definitely the first person in my family to ever own more than one home. And it's been kind of crazy and I still feel very guilty about it, but it's, it's nice. Um, and I like the beach uh, and travel and some other things that other people have mentioned. And many of you have kids and other big responsibilities. I have two dogs and they don't complain if I don't, well, they complain a little, but they don't complain out loud if I'm not around all the time. So I don't have any excuses really. Nice to meet y'all. So next up, uh, we have Megan, but before Megan goes, I just want to point out to Ben that before the pandemic, the last conference I did, I was down at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio first, and I went to the University of Houston in Houston for a medical school related conference. It was a christening of the medical school, and Dr. Tom Reeves and I were the keynotes of that, and you can, if you're interested in getting our slides and whatnot, um, Dr. Tom Reeves will be our guest in week four. And um, he's an emeritus professor from University of Georgia, an expert in design-based research and online learning and many other things. Um, so yeah, uh, the two of us were there. Uh, that would be February of 2020, a month before the pandemic exploded. It was already happening in China at the time. But um, so yeah, that was the last big event that I did. And it happened to be the open, kind of a celebrated opening of their medical school. Uh, and so it's a medical related um, conference, anyhow, a regional one. We've been there several times before for events as well. So Megan, are you still here? I am. Can everybody okay. hear me? I've been yeah. swapping back and forth between headsets. So I want to make sure I'm on the yeah. right microphone yeah. at this point. Um, so I, my advisors are, uh, Dr. Rush is my chair. Dr. Kwan and also Dr. Birch Lorenz, because uh, she and I share similar research interests. She does a lot of uh, research with LGBTQIA college uh, environment. Um, I'm looking into school climate for LGBTQIA students in high schools primarily. Um, you know, obviously for IRB purposes and for the scope of this dissertation, I will likely be uh, solely interviewing teachers, um, maybe some parents at Dr. Birch Lorenz's um, suggestion when I took her class last summer um, and, you know, other staff, but it, it's unlikely that I will be interviewing minors just because it, it will make it a lot more difficult. Um, <clears throat> 
I have, this has been my research focus. I was pursuing a second master's a while ago um, in counseling and that's sort of what I stopped it to, to do this program um, specifically because of LGBTQIA issues and school climate, stuff like that. And so I've been working on this the whole time, basically, you know, in the needs analysis class, I'm planning to do a needs analysis for my dissertation. Um, and I did a mini version of that in the needs analysis course with Dr. Brush. So this has been, you know, an ongoing thing. Uh, so I'm excited to, to do all that, but I um, am from New York originally, spent 15 years in North Carolina. Now I'm in Philly. I teach college math uh, as an adjunct and at a Mitchell Community College where I was full-time before I moved uh, to Philly last summer. And I do enjoy traveling. I actually was lucky enough to go to Italy this summer with a friend, so that was amazing. Um, I also did a little traveling to Kim's wedding, which was super fun. Um, that was the first time we met in person. We've been friends for the last year over Zoom and we met in person, so that was exciting. Um, and yeah, it, I like to play a lot of uh, adult league sports. So um, that's something I do, you know, in my free time. So that's it. So what are you good at in sports? Uh, well, I, good at, I, I recently played sand volleyball um, this summer, which was super fun because I played volleyball and basketball in high school. I played varsity, um, both of those. So that, that was really fun to get back into. I play on a kickball league. I'm not very good at it, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, now that things are a little safer pandemic wise, I don't think they are, but you know, here we are. Um, I am going to, I plan to do a, um, a basketball league this winter. So oh, and when I did buy a piano and I'm teaching myself to play again, I, I played back in, in, as a child. So that's another, in all my free time, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> so that's it. So I think we missed Sabahat. Um, so she's looking at external representation, simulations, gestures, and cognitive science related to instructional design. Um, so I'm trying to develop a grounded approach, looking at embodied statistics, simulations. She hopes to defend in two years. She's from Turkey and she likes food. So uh, there we go, um, don't we all? And some of us are probably rather hungry right now uh, as this course tonight extends. We won't go too much longer. I think I'll save my part or I'll briefly, if I do uh, present and just wait till next week since we've already gone nearly two hours, but we'll see. Um, Kim is the final one. And so Kim, I asked her to, so well, why don't you introduce yourself and then why don't you pose a question, Kim? Okay, so um, my name is Kim Tarvis and I am a and I'm a professor at SUNY Cobleskill, an associate professor at SUNY Cobleskill. Uh, I am recently back from sabbatical. I'm exhausted from my first two days of teaching. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I advise 59 students. And right now I am teaching over 200 students in three courses. So um, there's just a lot going on. <laughs> Do you have days. help in grading or not? No, I'm the I'm the grader. Okay. Yeah. Do you have mechanical help automatizing any um, of that? Yes, for some things, but not for not for others. Okay. So um, and I will not complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, all the essays have to get hand graded. Um, but we do have rubrics. So or I develop them. But um my uh, my research interests, per, professional interests are not related necessarily to instructional design. Um, I am a reproductive physiologist. Uh, I have my a master's degree from Colorado State in that, and I have industry experience before going on to teaching. Uh, so this is definitely something different um, going into the EdD program. And one of the reasons why I pursued the EdD program, I actually was able to tell him, my department chair now this, was because um, before he was my department chair, he was a peer just like May. Um, I had put in a proposal to teach an online course in endocrinology. I asked my peers uh, where I could find some resources to be able to help me develop an asynchronous course to design it. And one of my colleagues said, go back to graduate school. That was a pretty humbling experience. So I might have shot him the finger under the table and was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And um, because of him, I took all 51 of the 
credits that I needed for coursework in one year. And every single time that I felt like I couldn't do it, I thought back to Ben. <laughs> so he really liked that when I told him. But um, <laughs> so my um, proposed timeline, um, I would like to defend in one or two years, depending on how the research goes and, you know, what what I get um, and how I'm able to be able to take the time to do what I need to do, um, especially with my advisement and teaching load, although we are hiring three new faculty in our department, which is growing exponentially. So I'm hoping that some of that will kind of get off my plate. Um, I'm originally from Rhode Island, but I live in Cobblestyle, New York. And um, some things that just recently happened, I got married, met Megan, crying my eyes out um, mm -hmm. after my wedding. Um, and my husband and I live in a house that I bought um, and hope to retire by the time I'm 50 to 55 so I can really enjoy retirement. Although my husband wants to work until he's 70, which is fine for him. Um, and <laughs> we're only children, so more than likely we are going to split our time between Rhode Island um, and Pennsylvania, where he is from. And his family has um, about 200 acres that will be passed down to him. Um, and then my personal hobbies, I really like to craft. I love to draw. I love to go eat, especially ice cream. I love to hang out with friends and um, I love to rearrange furniture. So uh, that was one of the things I was doing before this course. <laughs> so. <laughs> so if we see you standing up and moving chairs around, we'll know it's just a, a thing you like to do. It's, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, my so, so yeah. So now I'll get yeah. into the real grit of it. The uh, real grit. Um, yeah. So my proposed dissertation topic really stems from um, something that I've heard our students hem and haw, even post pandemic ab about this um, online animal science education. It is a big taboo topic. Nobody wants to talk about it. You can hardly find any research about it. Um, and the only research that has come out about it has been during COVID. In fact, um, there are three remote, fully remote um, Bachelor of Science programs in the United States alone. Um, and I, one of the things that I've noticed, especially as an instructor myself in this area, is the um, perceptions of online education, particularly in this field and in all of agriculture, actually, is pretty bad. It's pretty low. Um, so I want to explore that. I want to explore um, the need for an online animal science program. We're really getting pushed at our university right now to develop online programming. Um, this actually is an initiative through, um, because I work for SUNY, uh, which is the State University of New York. I am a state employee of New York and our budget is the lined item in the New York, the governor's um, budget. So initiatives for SUNY come from the governor herself and one of the initiatives is remote education. So um, that kind of leads me to the fact that uh, I have a jam board because I like to be a little bit, um, I like to be a little bit, uh, I like to know what I'm doing before I go. So I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, hey, hang on a second. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to pull up um, my other class and on week, 11, I think it is, hang on. Can you see my screen? No. Oh, um, we can see the, we can see the, um, the, the spreadsheet. Just the spreadsheet? Okay. Let me stop sharing. Let me try this again. Let me reshare uh, if I can find it. Can you see that? Yes. So on week three, see, uh, week 11, the third person, Tony Bates, he has a free book called Teaching in the Digital Age. See right here, I'm gonna click on, can you see that? Yes. Okay. I wrote to him today. He's 80, about 80 years old. He's gonna retire someday. He's in Vancouver where somebody wants to live. I forget who it was. Was it Megan or someone wants to live out that way? Um, was, there, was it you, Megan? 
It was. Yeah. So he lives out that way. Anyways, he's got a new edition. I've got it. I just added to the syllabus in R622. The third edition just came out. And he's going to be a guest in R622. And he'll talk about designing online learning environments. So you guys are all welcome. He's going to come on Halloween. So you guys are all welcome to, to come. And he's got his book in, um, what's that, press books. So he's got all the chapters in there. It's a free book. Anyway, so I'll stop sharing now, um, and uh, I'll let you share uh, what you want to share. Um, but I just wanted to point that out because I just booked him, and he's a good guy. He's a really good person. He does many free webinars for Contact North in Canada, which is out of Ontario. If you want to attend some interesting thing, how to use Zoom to engage students, for instance, Contact North has them. Uh, how to mo motivate students online. I've done several sessions for I'm going to do another one in two months for Contact North. It's like the Ontario distance learning arm or trying to connect students who are underprivileged to training resources and online courses and things like that. Uh, workforce development and whatnot. Anyways, that's just an aside. Um, so what do you got for a question for us? Um, so just to give you a little bit of understanding of what um, I'm trying to do, uh, that's just like what I said, lack of online animal science programs, yet um, agricultural science is seeking record enrollment, is seeing record enrollment. And this was just a recent article just last semester in the Chronicle of Higher Education. Um, right. So this is a big deal. Um, and some of the reasons of why are listed um, and I want to find out reasons for why we don't have a fully online program the, or the lack of, um, understand perspectives from stakeholders and how these perspectives have influenced online programming and to develop an online programming to see if there is a change in the perspective. And I'd like to do it through a mixed methods approach. So my question is, is that these are the research questions that I developed in R690. And I wanted to get your opinions about um, what your thoughts, I should say, your thoughts about these research questions. Are they research questions that would be doable um, or are they research questions that I need to um, really think about the scope of this? Um, is it too small or is it too big? Um, so that's my question. So the scope and what are your thoughts on the research questions? And I'll be the last one to reply. So I'll let others go first. And it's okay if you like hate it, you can say you hate it. Because at this point, you can say anything to me. I'm dog tired. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone in here likes kitty cats. I think that's you are. So she can't be dog tired. She's She likes cats. <laughs> Any comments, well, issues, questions? Go ahead, I, Rachel. Yeah, Kim, I would say that pre-pandemic, there are a lot of fields where faculty would say, well, online learning is nice for other fields, but not mine. And I'm from a language teaching field, and that was pretty common to hear, even though there was a vanguard of folks who were doing online language learning and pre-pandemic in language teaching, a big driver was money in ed tech for testing because there is in language uh, requirements, a lot of high stakes testing that companies could charge for. So anyway, there's a lot of money infused, but the basic argument was, oh, but my field's different than everything else. So therefore we can't do this thing online. And I, I was trying to think of the, the story about the one of the first doctors who used soap and prevented uh, female patients from dying because it, the old guard had to die before the zeitgeist could change. Um, so I don't know that that's anything you can put in your research, but um, there are the, one of the myths is, oh, my field can't be taught online. I appreciate that. Thank you, Rachel. Team, 
as a fellow animal scientist. <laughs> question. Your research question one gives the idea or the perception as if you're saying wholly online. Because animal science as a program, it can be totally online because there are some aspects. Exactly, Rachel, I agree with you on that. But from the science perspective, there are certain things you have to actually touch an animal to do. So when you say online, I, do you mean totally online or you mean like a hybrid type? So I don't know, is there a way you can put a clarification here? Well, I think I would argue with that. Okay. Because um, are you talking about technical education or are you talking about theory-based education? Because if you are looking at the typical online student who's really wanting um, online education in animal science, it's not students out of high school. It's people that are going back into the profession, going back into agriculture, and they don't necessarily want to touch cows. They want a career flip. Um, and so those courses are not going to be didactic courses in, in the barn or um, where you would need that hands-on approach to an actual live animal. They're going to be management. That's what okay. we're really seeing. Okay, good. Then maybe you might need to adjust the topic to reflect who you are targeting. Because looking at this, the perception is be a new graduate, a fresh from high school, or no matter the age, you want to do a, a program on an animal science program, this will qualify you. Based on what you are saying, that's not the case. So I think the project, or should I say the dissertation topic should need some maybe clarification online management, this. With that, I assure you a lot of people will say yes. That's my two cents. So, so I, oh, it's just got two sorry. cents. Does anyone have three cents I, or four? I do. Um, so Kim, actually along those lines, can, am I good? You can hear me? Good. Terrific. Along those lines, at one point you had talked about uh, AI stuff, right? Because I mean, there, there's a lot in science education too about, you know, are we even doing real life, real life labs anymore? Or are we only doing simulation? Right. And you could argue at some point, right? Like with surgery, a surgeon at some point is going to have to touch a human being <laughs> at some point, right? Like a veterinarian is going to have to touch an animal, but in, in some, especially some of the very beginning education, you know, can 90% of it be done using AI, using simulation, right? So are you steering? And then I have a second part of that. Are you, are you focusing on that anymore from these? I would say not really. Right. Cause I know at some point you'd mentioned something about AI. Um, I was going to do something like that. Um, uh, but I did not get funded to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. And funding is key. Um, yes. And my department does not fully support that. Okay. I, I couldn't remember. I feel like we probably talked yeah, about Yeah, no, it. it's fine. Time. I really honestly need my department's support because I, I teach the largest course on campus. And without my department's support, I cannot do what I want to do. I oh, don't yeah. have enough time in my spare time to do it. A hundred percent. Okay. So my second thing is just about um, the wording of the research question. And it, I, I'm, I'm having a pawan moment here where she would always say, you're assuming there is something. So it, just the wording of that, of that second question, in what ways do these perceptions underscore, I would say, and plus the wording of it with the do and then do or do not, I would say, you know, do these perceptions underscore the need. So just sort of looking at asking the question versus assuming they do. I know you're not because you're saying do they do or not, but just as, as a wording thing, um, okay. that's all. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. I don't mean to defend myself and I'm not, and I hope you know that a shot, I did not mean to defend that at all. <laughs> no, you're good. I didn't Listen, know you have you to practice are. defending yeah, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we all do at this point, right? <laughs> um, defending. <laughs> Ben, you jumping in here? Uh, well, um, first and foremost, just a selfish question. So if I'm presenting next week, uh, this isn't the level of detail that we're expected to be at right now, is it? It, it can be any question you want and have, <laughs> you know, whatever you'd like. I just want to have everyone have a chance to get feedback on whatever topic they're interested in talking about. Got it. Well, it, um, you've definitely set a high bar. So congratulations, Kim. I, I, I think these are uh, a great start for sure. 
um, just uh, hearing everybody, uh, everybody in the discussion, and I might just be rephrasing what's already been said, but one interesting question is, is there a difference between prospective students view of online education and then the stakeholders within the education right now? Like, do we need to send up a warning signal to administration and faculty? Here's what your incoming students are going to be expecting. And that might get back to um, a shots question. I hope I'm saying your first name right. Um, that what are the perceptions of what they want? So um, and are we getting the right population of students more is my you know, is my research off? And that that's could be definitely of the research question to start before that. So, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. Vegas got a thunderstorm. I had a lightning all around me two nights ago when I went out running. It was pretty wicked and pretty scary. So I ran close to home. I thought for sure I'm not going to get two miles in, but I ran over two miles. If the clouds broke up right at the end, but it was lightning all at still after they broke up what I could see up in the sky. Uh, it was pretty scary. At night in the Midwest, at least storms tend to roll in, but you're over in Philadelphia. So you got that, you're getting the storms that we had. See, uh, Megan, you want to jump in and say a few words. You want to bless this project. Me? Yeah. I did already. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I mean, saying. I can say more. But... Oh, you would. <laughs> you would. Sure. Okay. I have a question about the industry professionals. Are they the one who is currently working in the field or they're the one who actually, do you have like a board or like a some practitioner or something like that? You have to pass a licensure exam? That's a good question. Um, and to be very honest, it depends on the specific, uh, the specific position. So let's say like if you're a milk tester, Yes, you have to have a license. If you're a veterinary technician, yes, you have to have a license. But we don't have a veterinary technician program. We're not set up here for anything like that. Um, we don't have the accreditation to be able to do that. Um, but there are uh, most of the animal science positions where our students are placed, they do not need any type of certification unless they are going for um, some type of like my husband is a dairy nutritionist a dairy cattle nutritionist, and he has a certification called a professional animal scientist. So he used to do continuing education credits for that. And it means a lot. So it's a big bump in pay to be able to be, have that PAS acronym after your name. Um, so it, but that's the only positions that I know of in nutrition that you would need something like that, but it's something to explore. And it sounds like what I need to do is to maybe see what, what is out there for what people would want and um, the need for that. So, and the expectation, the want and the expectation for the um, education. Another thing to consider, I don't know whether this is applicable to your study is different state, they may have a different requirement. So I don't know whether that kind of broaden your research or is too much to consider because I remember when we work with our nursing program, we have to consider all the licensure in different states and then certain faculty member cannot teach because they don't hold the licensure for that state. So they have to hire some potential faculty for that. Um, they have to hire last minute hire. And then that kind of, um, you know, they already have a good uh, uh, program planning thing, but it's because of the licensure program, then they kind of like, they have to change, make last minute change some um, practical concerns they have to think about. Definitely, I can definitely can consider that, absolutely. Um, it's, it's really interesting because Kansas State just put together an online animal science program and they um, have now beat just in that program alone, all of the other programs that they have on campus by almost double. Wow. Um, and Unity Maine has an online animal science program that is busting at the seams. Uh, I get emails probably every other day to join their faculty. So uh, those are the two biggest programs right now. Um, and that's it. There's like one other one, but it's nothing. Um, but is, is Unity Maine in a good location? 
Unity Maine is known for environmental education. So, um, and it's, uh, it's in, it's in unity. I, I think it's like North of Portland. It's mm -hmm. extremely expensive. It's one of the, um, out of all of the environmental colleges in New England, it is the most expensive by far. So uh, they have a fishing derby every year to give you a perspective for incoming freshmen. And in that, they, they do it on their pond. It's like a lake. Um, you can go there and you can fish for scholarships. That's how they have done previously, maybe 10 years ago. I don't know if they do it now, but you fish for your scholarship. And in there is one fish that's tagged for a full scholarship to Unity for four years. Um, but that's like, it's very expensive. You're looking at six figure education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sune? Uh, actually, this topic is very new to me. So I try to understand this. So the first of all, so you, you said that so there is no online degree program for animal science. Is there that are correct? three, there are three online animal science programs right now in the United States. Okay. And we're so, not looking at um, any programs outside the United States because that's a completely different educational model for anything related to technical education. So actually, I just wondering, so what is the purpose of your study? So you want to, you know, perform the needs assessment and then the, figure out the reason why there are small number of, you know, online degree program for animal science? Is that your purpose or? Um, I want to know what, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yes. And no, <laughs> I, I want to know the perceptions of what we have here at SUNY Cobalt Skill and, and why, um, we haven't built an online animal science program. I want to stay within SUNY Cobalt Skill. <laughs> this can get really big very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. Um, it would be great to be able to do that. Uh, but that's going to be a lot. Um, it's going to be a lot, not a lot of work. I'm not afraid of work or allergic to work, um, but it's, it's going to be very, very big. And we, I don't intend to publish this. I mm -hmm. intend to use this to our benefit at the college. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we're trying to be pretty, I'm trying to be pretty strategic of. I know that my department chair and others have been saying, well, you know, it would be great to be able for you to publish this, but that's not my main thing. You know, I can still publish in my other career interests. Um, this is purely because I'm very vested in my position. It seems that you want to use that result of this study for your organization. So I highly recommend it just to find the benefit of having online degree program for the college. Maybe that's really good. You know, even if, you know, perception is everyone want to that program, but there is no benefit or you know, proven benefit, I think. So maybe you have to search for that, you know, related article maybe, but I'm not sure that's because you said that there is a really small number of online degree program for that. Are, are you talking about what the benefit would be for the college? Yeah, having that program. That's because okay. you, you have the benefit. To support it. Yeah, here's the benefit. <laughs> Money. <laughs> uh that's benefit that's the biggest benefit that's good yeah right that's the biggest yeah financial yeah that's good just if you don't mind I, it seems to me that sometimes it's more convincing if you talk about other people rather than people at home people at home might have thin skins and get easily offended if if it doesn't go their way you might do a uh, look at K-State K and Unity Maine, how their programs developed over time and, you know, what what had to shift. I mean, it's, it it's might a, be something that's more publishable, too, is do a case study of these two programs that are very successful and see if you can determine, you know, what turned the tide there to make them embrace online. I know it's way different than your questions, but if you're looking to implement change, sometimes if you look too closely at the people you want to change, they get a little scared. Yeah, I understand. 
So I'm going to make a modification to the syllabus and put Rachel and Sunmei in charge, and I don't have to attend the next 13 weeks. That was an excellent suggestion, Rachel. And, and Sunmei, you don't realize that you had an excellent suggestion. All of you had excellent suggestions. Uh, the first question, when you're designing questions for a research study, um, you, you should try, if you've got something that's more of an umbrella, perceptions of faculty, administration, students, professionals, you try and put a, a precursor question, the big question one, and then you have sub questions related to students, sub question 1A, sub question 1B, administration, sub question 1C, faculty, sub question 1D, industry professionals with the same STEM, it just says for, for students, for faculty, for whatever. Now, four stakeholders might be a bit much to try and gather data for one dissertation. So you want to figure out which stakeholder is the best one to look at. And if you do what, what Rachel's suggesting, you're going to have to be hard pressed to get the student perspective. And it may not even be important, actually. Um, you, you do want to get administrator perspective, I would think, from Unity and from K-State and maybe one or two other programs out there or three other, you know, up to five. And, uh, and it depends how many programs you can get access to for how much of a scope you want to do in terms of faculty and administrators and so forth. Uh, is it a single case study or is it multiple? And then, you know, faculty, yeah, that might be interesting because who are in the program, of course. Um, industry professionals on the outside looking in would be very interesting too. And that might be a separate study, it, you know, um, that might be a study in and of itself, the industry perspectives, given what they might know about Unity and K-State and other prominent programs in the field, Wisconsin might be in, I don't know, that's where I went to school. They had a nice farm and a nice ice cream shop and dairy and so forth. Um, so that's, you know, the first question needs to be reorganized, split, and maybe what are the perceptions of, stake, of stakeholders uh, in an animal science program about online animal science programs. Um, but again, that's too broad and you have sub questions. Then the next one, I think you wanna avoid do or do not, okay? Um, because you can do the do and you're gonna understand the do nots. So all you need to do is in what ways do these programs under uh, perceptions underscore the need for animal science programs. You can just delete the do or do not. In what ways do they underscore them? However, when you go with Sunmei's question, you got question three. Uh, uh, what are the benefits of an online animal science program? And then you got Kurt's question number four. What are the challenges and barriers of an online animal science program? Uh, and that's going to be extremely important when you get at that, if you can do the case studies, because it's going to be informative to SUNY Cobble Skill, uh, because it's going to help them address the challenges and barriers and be aware of the potential benefits before they design the program so they can allocate resources that are enough to cover whatever um, the challenges that they indicate are critical ones. And you might have them rank the challenges along the way. You might have them also talk about what the challenges were to begin the program as well as what the challenges are now after they've had the program established for six months or one year or however long that they've had it. In fact, the whole dissertation could be about the challenges and the design of an online animal science program um, at two different increments in time, the beginning of a program and the current state. So you could actually say in startup and in the current state thereof, um, might be very interesting to, to, to look at. And you wipe out both question one and two and you create a whole new question. So that's my thinking um, brought on by what Rachel, what Sunme, what Megan, what Ben, what uh, Aisha, what um, you uh, and everyone else had to say along the way. Sorry if I forgot someone. Yeah. So this is the purpose of doing one of these early on. We're kind of doing what we'd be doing with you in week six now here in week two 
because uh, we're going to have one-to-one -one meetings with all of you, either in week five or six or somewhere there. Um, and again, weeks 14 and 15. So you got a jump start. Does that help, Kim? It does. What was um, question number three from Sume? I totally could not get that down quickly enough. <laughs> yeah, I've got it in my head, but I want to see if she does. Sume, you want to try? What is what is the potential benefit of implementing that online degree program for animal science? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's like a SWOT analysis: strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Your dissertation could be a SWOT analysis that could be very that helpful. Would that would for, be amazing. You know, for for the that you know, but. As you ask those questions, though, there might be different populations you go to answer the questions. So my suggestion is if you do a SWOT analysis, you do one of the quadrants for your dissertation and you do the other three quadrants uh, with others at, in your work setting uh, to gather all four quadrants for an evaluation report that goes to the administrators of SUNY Cobble Skill. And then they're not just relying on your dissertation, they're going to have to provide some other resources to gather, you know, the other, whatever the other quadrants are. I, you know, I, or, or you do the SWOT analysis as a supplement in addition to your dissertation, which is gonna look at the challenges and benefits of a, a online animal science program or perceptions challenges and benefits if you wanna. You no, know. we can nix the perceptions. I wasn't sold on it. Okay. <laughs> So I would oh, I would no, say what are the challenges great. and benefits and you might have something else challenges benefits and and you know opportunities yeah. uh, of a and then you get a part of the SWAT and then you do the SWAT as a separate as a as a, as a report that's internal and they're not going to rely and they may rely on you for somewhat but you won't have so much pressure on you coming for a bed when are you going to get done when are you going to get done it's a second project in parallel to the to your dissertation you see, and you you then you you gain status, um, but but you can't but but your results of your dissertation won't lower your status in any way because they're not reliant totally on your dissertation for the big report that's going to determine where they're going in the future. You don't want that. You don't want uh, the university to be totally reliant on your dissertation to be making decisions. You want that to be informative and to raise your status, but you wanna have something else happening along the way that's, that's some kind of structure or um, maybe, I hate to use committee, but you know, you um, an ancillary report, uh, a white paper, a technical report, whatever it is, that, that is the report of SUNY Cobble Skill. Your dissertation is separate from that. It can inform it, could be cited in it, maybe a significant component of it. But I, I, if there's problems along the way, you want it, you want them to say, go back to the report of the university, not go back to Kim's dissertation and find out what we what we did wrong. Okay. I appreciate it. I I really do. The president's coming in two weeks to our department chair or to mm -hmm. our department meeting to talk about online education like yeah. we're really getting pushed so um yeah and my department chair is relying on me <laughs> to sure. head her off so this will be great thank you i appreciate it thank you for allowing me excuse my language to bring shit to this and you guys polished my turd up to a diamond so thank okay. you very much yeah well you know uh, we're we're a step ahead of where we're normally at here uh for you we got seven others in here. We need to polish them up too. Uh, I'm assuming. Do you want to stop sharing your screen here yes. so we oh, can I get, apologize, guys. So, yeah, so we can uh, say good night tonight. We've gone. I'll save both. I had part one and two. What I was going to talk about part one tonight and part two. I'll just do part one and two next week. I'll ask Rob and I'll see how to present for 15 minutes each and have Q and A after, so we can get one hour and two hour. And at the end of the, the my part, we'll have Ben go with a similar kind of. If that's okay, Ben, just a kind of a, a round robin of just some feedback. Um, nothing doesn't have to be that deep. Um, we don't have to solve the world's problems. Just wanted to get a chance to get you know to know uh, what Ben is working on and and all. So it's just really trying to create some um, 
uh, shared mutual knowledge in here or intersubjectivity within among each other so that you can talk on the side if you want to. Um, and in later weeks, you'll know when Kim's talking about the looking at the challenges and benefits or whatever it is that she's decided, you'll understand the path that she's been on. So we've had three people. We've had um, last week, uh, we had Angie's list. We've had uh, Mong Wan's list and Sun Mei's list. So three people guiding you early in here. And because the, the number one, and, and Saba has a PhD, so she didn't have to worry about getting this feedback. She's did her quals. Um, so, um, but we, we, you know, this is the number one concern for students is the quals, right? And then of course, passing your qualifying exam. So we're hitting this over the head a few times here early. So then you can relax a little bit and maybe take some practice quals and whatnot and feel comfortable about it and then work on the proposal. So, so start working on the assignment that's due today slash Saturday and try and get those posted to Canvas and I'll look at them whenever on Saturday or Sunday over the weekend. Okay, great. Glad everyone's feeling a little bit better. Let's give a round of applause to Sune and to Kim and, and we'll call it an end to, I'll stop the recording uh, week two. Stop recording. Thank you very much.